Hello and a big one welcome to you, to you. I felt called to make this Facebook Live today because I'm going to do little and often Facebook Lives, although that might be more accessible. I'm going to keep doing my once a week big Sunday, uh, kind of more like a talk and then the Q&A the following week, but I'd love to do lots of quick ones. So what I'd love to share today is... I was um, I dropped my daughter into ballet into our local town, actually a bit bigger than where we live. It's kind of a bit small. So the next town, which is a bit bigger and just seeing lots of um, parents and babies out. Uh, it's a sunny, not sunny, it's a rainy Sunday and thinking a lot about remembering those days as a mama of ba a baby and another baby and how, of course, um, as parents, we want to go, well, maybe not everyone, but maybe out to restaurants or to cafes you know, on a Sunday and to shops. And it can meet so many needs for us. And Kiridi, hello, hello. And I really um, also really wanted to remind you that babies are so aware and sentient and they're taking in every different experience. So... I really just wanted to remind you if you do have a baby and that you're going out to places that, you know, things like shops and where there's lots of cars and shops and people and stimulation, that that can be a really a lot for babies to experience. And, um, you know, whatever we can do to, uh, what I love about aware parenting is it's always trying to find ways to meet everybody's needs. So it's really looking at what ways can we get our needs met for stimulation, for fun and for entertainment and for getting things done. You know, we do need to go out and buy food and things like that. And this you do it all online, which is, which can be one really helpful solution I was thinking of um, nowadays in particular. I just remember all those times I took my kids to shops and things when they were little and, you know, times often where it was one of my repression mechanisms used to be buying stuff or going shopping, which I don't have anymore. Um, and I really just wish I could go back and rewind the clock and reach out to someone those times where I felt called to go to a shop when I actually remember so many times that wasn't an enjoyable experience for my kids. And yes, when they get older, that can, there can be ways that can be fun. But to really look at what, what kind of ways can you get your needs met and your baby's needs met. And the other, the other ways you can do those kinds of things is if you are going out is really remembering that um, having a baby close can be much um, more helpful to protect them from overwhelm and overstimulation. Having them in a carrier can really, really help. Having body contact, having them facing inwards rather than outwards. And all of these things, you know, the younger a baby is, the more, the more they are affected by stimulation. I love um, Aletha Sauter's um, way of looking at overstimulation. It's anything that a baby cannot yet understand can be really overwhelming and overstimulating. So, you know, the newer a baby, the less they understand about the world. They're seeing uh, all these things and they're not actually understanding them. And they're gradually making sense of their experience, which is why as they get older, things that were overwhelming and overstimulating become less so so i really remember my daughter if i take her out and i take her in a um, a wrap or a carrier often she'd fall asleep when she was really little when we would go busy places so that's another thing that babies will often do so if we can give them the conditions so that if actually it feels overwhelming for them they can actually go to sleep and protect themselves from overwhelm that way so providing the conditions for that to happen so that they um you know, the, that's easiest for them if they're close to our bodies, if they're in some kind of carrier or being held and they're facing inwards so that they can actually choose to protect themselves. Um, and of course, you know, you may have them can be physical reasons sometimes or it's, you know, I really hear you and understand if you need to use a, a stroller or a pushchair or whatever it is. And just really remembering, though, that, um, you know, whatever you can do to limit the, the amount of stimulation, especially the younger the baby. And the other thing to remember is that when you get home, they may have some feelings to tell you about it. So it can be really helpful to, to get home and sit with them and connect with them, hold them and you know, say, do you have anything you want to tell me about that? How was that for you? So really knowing this isn't about negating our own needs and denying ourselves but you know in any situation I think whatever age our children whether they're baby 
whether they're in the womb, whether they're a teenager or older, if they're still, you know, we're still hanging out with them. How can we find ways to get everyone's needs met? And I think that can be such a beautiful thing without any judgment of either party. But what's what's most needed here? What can we what what strategies, what what ways can we find to, to meet everyone's needs? Now, the other thing is. Um, I was on a call today with two mamas um, of babies. Um, one's a third baby, the other's a second baby, both very experienced um, in aware parenting and so wonderful. I so loved connecting in with them. And um, we were talking lots about talking to babies and explaining, and children as well, explaining, talking to them about what's happening, really responding to them as, as, aware sentient beings yes they may not have all the information understanding that we do but they 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 understand so much and i think this particularly for babies that we sometimes you know, particularly in our culture we don't really realize that they are they understand so much more often than we than we take um give them credit for now, i really remember when i was um i was a postdoctoral research fellow after my PhD I did um, I worked with newborn babies and we we were basically holding babies and showing them different things and right from newborn and then we were um, observing their behaviors and ascertaining what they know so this is a whole field of developmental psychology and right from from birth and and of course you know even since the really the 50s and 60s we have so much research now about babies and even before birth but you know right from right from birth in particular that we have more information of how much they understand how much they're taking in um, information how much they're making conclusions men have preferences they are incredibly aware present sentient beings and I think it'd be such a helpful thing to remember um, whenever we can to be really talking to them, explaining, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is what's happening here. You know, how is this for you? Asking even, um, you know, even and especially babies, you know, um, how is this for you? I'm going to do this. How are you feeling? What's going on for you? And really watching, you know, the way they they they're constantly in conversation with us. They are they are wired for conversation they are searching out um synch synchronous conversations with us so really re remembering that and for any age you know really as much as we can treating babies children teens with respect with compassion ourselves with respect and compassion and you know, really engaging them in conversations and really trusting that whatever's showing up, you know, I've been talking to a few different people in different places recently. Actually, one theme's come up is um, around children. Actually, not this has gone off the subject a bit, but kind of not. Um, children um, not telling the truth and you know, really looking that, that anything a child does, a baby does, there's meaning in it. You know, they're they're aware, present, sentient beings. And when they're doing things, it's always looking about, you know, what's going on for them? What are they sharing? Hi, Kelly. What's their, um, you know, what's their experience in the world? And really, the more we treat them from right from birth, actually from in the womb, with this respect, from this absolute trust in their, in their awareness, their sentience, their understanding. And I really see that the more we treat them like that, the more they respond in kind, you know, that they, 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 you know, they, it's a two way street. It's that respectful relationship goes both ways. And, you know, obviously we do have more information, understanding and so on that, that also that they need help with, but we're treating them as equals in terms of awareness and presence and, and respect. So I just wanted, hi lovely. So I just want to make this little, not just, I'm, I'm removing just from my vocabulary at the moment. So I wanted to make this little, um, Facebook Live. My aim is to make one every day on little, quick little things so that it's kind of doable to, to watch little ones. So if you have any, also any requests about things you'd like me to be making them on. But for today, my offering is, um, yeah, responding to babies and children of any age, um, with absolute respect and, and real deep trust in that awareness, um, sentience presence that they have. Lots of love. Thanks for joining in, Kelly. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> oh, I've lost the button. There it's